Hey, what's up? It's uh, Thursday night, October the 2nd, 2008. Hard to believe we're already into the month of October, of course, so the holidays will be here before we know it. We've got Mobile Beat Las Vegas coming up in February. Lots of things happening between now and then, so I know it's definitely going to be a very busy time for mobile DJs across the nation and around the world, so yeah, definitely going to be uh, getting busy here in the next few months. What I want to talk to you about today, though, is uh, our responsibility as wedding DJs. What does that mean? Okay, for you new guys starting out, let me tell you what it doesn't mean. Okay, being a, a professional wedding DJ isn't about just setting up equipment, playing music for a few hours, and then leaving. Okay, it goes well beyond that. We have to actually plan out the reception from start to finish and plan the entertainment out. That's our responsibility. Now, I know that brides uh, have wedding coordinators, but really the role of the wedding coordinator lies with uh, the ceremony, the decorations, the food, booking the venues, and things like that. But when it comes time for the entertainment, that's our responsibility. Okay, planning out and laying out the entertainment and, uh, and, and planning the reception out from that point of view, that's the DJ's responsibility. Okay, because since we're in the entertainment business, that's what we do. Now, I'm going to tell you what I normally do. Okay, whenever a bride inquires, whether it's by phone or by email, I normally send them a wedding information packet. And I mentioned this in another video. But my wedding information packet, I go over the entire process from start to finish, you know, a complete walkthrough of the reception at each part of it, you know, starting out with the planning and also, you know, the different parts of the reception from the cocktail hour to the bouquet throw, garter toss, first dances, things like that. You know, everything's uh, mapped out on how we normally do things. Okay? And from there, when they decide that they want to book me, of course, we go ahead and sign the contract and I collect their deposit. And once we collect the deposit, I send them a reception planning guide and also a reception information form. And on that reception information form, it uh, has a place where they can list the date and the time of the, uh, of the wedding. And in their particular music needs, where they can list their uh, bridesmaids and groomsmen, as well as the best man, maid, or matron of honor, and, uh, and their wedding party, as well as their parents on both sides. So we make sure that we got everybody's name lined up just like they want. And it's also got a place there for their musical preferences, what songs they want to hear, what songs they don't want to hear. Like, for example, if they absolutely don't want the Macarena played at their particular uh, wedding, then we won't play it. But it's usually uh, listed there. And they've got a place there where they can list uh, a bunch of songs that they definitely want played. Okay, and then what I normally do after I get that wedding reception information form back, now I normally require that they return it back to me within uh, two weeks before their wedding. Okay, and I usually tell them don't uh, worry about sending it any further out than that because uh, let's say a, a bride books me like, well, say now for a wedding that's going to be eight months from now. You know, I mean, I just had a, a wedding uh, that, that's been booked for July 4th, and I told uh, that particular bride, you know, I'm sending you the uh, wedding information form to go ahead and fill out, but don't worry about getting it back to me right now because I won't need it back till two weeks before your wedding. Okay, well, why is that? Well, because right now the brides may know what their first uh, song is going to be, what their father bride song is going to be, and their mother groom song, and things of that nature. But then two, three months from now, they may decide on another song that they like. They may hear something on the radio and decide, hey, that's what I want. So we always wait until about two weeks before the uh, the wedding to get the information back so we start the, you know, putting in the planner at that time. And that's what I always tell my bride, you know, don't worry about filling all that out now, but start thinking about, you know, the music that you want to have and things of that nature. Okay, now when the bride sends the, the wedding information form back to me, I, I usually email it to them and they can email it back to me if they, if they feel better on doing that. I type everything up on a nice planner. I'm going to show you a sample of one here. Let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to cover up the, uh, the bride and groom's uh, name on this particular one. Okay, let me show you this. But you see how we, how we got everything listed here, right there, the uh, the very beginning of it, you know, the, the time of the wedding, the welcome and the introductions, the wedding party introductions, you know, got all the listings of their um, their names, and then, of course, the bride and groom, and, uh, you know, of course, the, uh, the, the listing on, on how we're going to do everything, like, for example, the, the cocktail hour, the cake cutting, all that good stuff is all listed right here. And what I normally do is I, I break this all up into different into the different parts. Okay, like right up here, you see the bouquet throw, the removal of the garden specialty dances. See, we line all this up for the bride and groom, make it all nice and organized for them. And if you can uh, see right here, we have the New Year's Eve countdown because this was a wedding that I did on New Year's Eve last year. You know, we talk about how we're going to do that. We incorporate that in there as well. But anyway, I type all that up for the bride and groom, and I send that to them. And in case we need to go ahead and make changes, they can look it over and decide if we need to make changes. And that's why we say two weeks ahead of time. So we got time to, to go ahead and make changes on that. All right, then once I finally, uh, once they finally send that back, after they've approved it, 
I go ahead and, and send a copy of this to each one of their vendors, their wedding coordinator, the uh, food vendors, the photographer, everybody gets a copy of that so that we all know that we're on the same page. Okay, and I've had so many photographers, especially the photographers, uh, tell me that they uh, that they really appreciate that I do that because it makes sure that nobody is surprised. You know, I mean, they, they look at this and they know exactly what we're going to do when we're going to do it. And it helps to, to make um, to make things uh, run a lot smoothly. You know, so, you know, you don't want, the key is you don't want anybody guessing on uh, what's going to happen next. So that's what I normally do. I, you know, like I said, type everything up for them. And then uh, on the day of the wedding, we get there and uh, you know go ahead and set up about two hours ahead of time, and then we, we run everything according to how the uh, how this goes. I mean, I've got everything right here in front of me. Now, also, I think it's very important to uh, type up a planner like this, and and this is just a little bit of assurance that I can tell my brides and grooms because if something happens, and I let's say I'm sick or I get into an accident, God forbid something like that were to happen, then if I had to get another DJ. What I could do at the very last moment is uh, give the DJ a copy of this and say, here, this is what the bride and groom want. And in that way, you know, uh, the, the, he already knows uh, what they're going to do and, and when they're going to do it. You know, just follow that and they're good to go. So that's already their preferences. So that's another thing that you got to keep in mind as well. So see, when we say we're wedding DJs, you know, really that's an understatement because we really are wedding professionals. And we're, and we're actually the wedding reception planners when you think about it because we do, we're the ones that are responsible for uh, planning the entertainment out. And I tell my brides and grooms, you know, that, that they are, the part of their fee uh, with me is uh, is planning and preparation. And I told them that, uh, you know, if they have a wedding coordinator or somebody like that who is trying to say, you know, that they plan the entertainment out. Well, I tell them, uh, well, what you need to do is you just need to tell them that, that, that that's the DJ's responsibility. And they can work with you and work with us uh, on that. But, uh, but don't let them charge you an, an additional fee for planning out the entertainment portion of the reception when you're paying me for the same thing. You know, I just want to make sure that you're not getting double charged on that because... Yeah, as, as wedding professionals, that is our responsibility to plan out the reception. So you got to uh, really uh, think about that. Now, I mentioned a wedding summary. Okay, I don't have a copy uh, with me uh, right at the moment, but what I normally do after the reception is over with is I send the bride and groom a, a nice uh, form to fill out. And it's, it's basically a form to rate the services, you know, how, how did we perform and were their wishes carried out, etc. But I also send them a wedding summary. Okay, and uh, with uh, with my computer, of course, everything uh, the computer logs every every song that was played, and I type all that up for the bride and groom, and I so wedding summary, and then I and I make them a list of all the songs that was played in order. Okay, so they've got a copy of that to put in their wedding album, and they really appreciate that, uh, you know, because 20 years from now that they can look back on their wedding album and say, hey, I remember this song, or their their kids will look back and say, oh my gosh, Soldier Boy, what was that song y'all played? I can't believe y'all play something like that. But anyway, it's, it's just a nice little keepsake for the bride and groom, and they really do appreciate things like that. So, you know, any little freebies that you can do like that really goes a long way. I've, I've had so many compliments on the, on the way that I type up the summaries. And from what I know, uh, I think that I'm about the only one around here that does anything like that. So that may be something you may want to consider. You know, and, uh, uh, of course, uh, a lot of, um, of DJs will, will give the bride and groom a CD of their music, and... Uh, Okay, I don't do that, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, making a CD like that of all the music in your library that was played, actually that violates just about every copyright law there is. Okay, and if you get caught, you can be in a lot of trouble by that. So, um, you, so you can't do that. You, you know, you really can't be copying music from your library and, and giving it to the bride and groom because that, that is illegal. And I, I don't think really anybody's really talked that much about that, but it is uh, illegal. But we'll talk about that more in another video um, later on. But that's why I always make sure... That I type up a summary for the bride and groom, and then I list all the songs there, and then that way the bride and groom, if they want to make a CD, they've got the music so they can go purchase it legally. Okay, so that uh, that always helps out, and they really do appreciate things like that. So anyway, if you got any comments on uh, things that you do, anything you want to add to this, feel free to drop me a comment down below, or you can always drop me a video response as well, or just drop me an email, s n d j e n t i n c at aol.com. I hope this has been very informative for you. And until next time, practice and enjoy.